Hello grade 7 learners, welcome to my zone online school. My name is Pietra Spoto and then I am joined by Pomwena. Let's welcome Pomwena. Okay, first of all, let's sanitize our hands. Then you make sure that we apply it properly, both inside and then also outside. And then even between the fingers. Thank you. From there we make sure that we apply the social distance and then we put on our mask always okay first before we move on i just want to tell you something i understand that covid 19 has covid 19 has closed our schools but then does that that does not mean that it has closed our minds not even our abilities therefore i encourage you to keep up with your school make sure that every day you do something for uh, which is related to school because you know that education is the greatest equalizer. Thank you. Okay, our today's lesson is uh, based on science grade seven, week four, which will focus on sexuality and sexual health, STDs, HIV, and AIDS. As I've already said that our, our lesson for today will be based on sexuality and sexual health, STD and HIV and AIDS, I want all of us to turn at page 222 of our booklet, where we'll first focus or look at our competences. The first competence says that state three ways HIV is transmitted and then three ways it is not transmitted. And then the second one, it says that state that no one knows for sure where HIV and AIDS came from, but that they affect all kinds of people all over the world. And then the second last competence says that a learner in grade 7 must be able to explain what, explain that there is no cure yet for HIV and AIDS, but there are life prolonging treatment. And then the last competence says that discuss the myth and taboos around HIV and AIDS. Wonderful. From here, we are moving on to our vocabulary words, or to say to our new words for the lesson. The first one, it says that you must know what is a myth. So we are saying that a myth means untrue belief, or just to say, these are stories which are not true, just fake news. And then the second one, it says taboos. By definition, it says taboo is something that people cannot talk about because they feel it may be considered as disrespectful, embarrassing or unacceptable in the community. Okay, from here I want all of us to move on to page 23 where we are going to start with our today's lesson. On page 23, it says that you must be able to state at least even three ways HIV is not transmitted. So, the ways in which HIV is not transmitted we speak by, no, no, I'm sorry, it says state three ways HIV is transmitted. The ways in which HIV is transmitted, we speak about through sexual intercourse or to be so specific by saying through unprotected sexual intercourse. The other way it says through blood conduct and then the last one which is given to us, it says from mother to child during birth. All of us you can see even uh, in the pictures which are on top on top there, as it says, through sexual intercourse, you can see that the picture shows people that are involved in sexual intercourse, and then if there is no condom which is used, and then one of them is infected with the virus, it means that the other person will also be infected. And then the second one which says, through blood conduct, we can see that in the hand, in the hand there is something that looks like uh, red, so we are saying that that is the blood, so if our blood happen to come into contact, and then one of us is infected with the virus, it means that both of us will become positive. And then the last one shows a person who is pregnant, and then as you said, HIV is transmitted from, from mother to child during birth, meaning that if the mother is HIV positive, there is a possibility that the child will also become, or will also be positive, or to say, having HIV and AIDS. From there we are moving on to what? To ways in which HIV is not transmitted. So there are many ways in which HIV is not transmitted. The first one we are saying that by shaking hands. So meaning that even if you happen to hear that someone is HIV positive, don't refuse to shake 
hands with that person because shaking hands doesn't transmit the virus. However, I advise you that when you are shaking hands, you make sure that you don't have a wound. Or to say, both of you don't have wounds at your hands because if you have wounds, that can result into blood contact. And then the next, way, the next way in which HIV is not transmitted, we speak about eating together. So, meaning that even if you know that your, one of your housemates is HIV positive, don't refuse to eat with that person be, uh, just because that you're afraid of getting the virus. Eating, eating together doesn't transmit the virus. Another one it says by kissing each other. So meaning that when you are kissing the person or your partners, it doesn't transmit HIV or to, or to say the virus. However, we are one that make sure that you don't have an open cut on your lips or to say you don't have a wound on your lips because if the two of you, you have wounds on your lips, that can result in the transmission of the virus. And then the second last, which is given to us, it says swimming together. Meaning that if you are just in a swimming pool, and then even if you know that you're, the person that you are swimming together is HIV positive, that, that will not make you to become positive also. And then the last one, which is given to us, it says insect bite. So meaning that even if you happen to, even if a, even if a certain insect, let, let me speak about a mosquito. If it bites you, it will not transmit this virus, which is called HIV and then AIDS. Okay, so from here we are moving on to page 24. On page 24, it says that as a learner in grade 7, you must be able to state that no one knows for sure where HIV and AIDS came from. But then, but that they affect all kinds of people all over the world. What does this mean? It means that HIV and AIDS does not discriminate, discriminate people. It infects people of any kind, regardless of gender, sex, race, ethnic, eth ethnicity, age, financial status, or educational status. So meaning that don't, don't say that you are who who, you not, uh, HIV will not be able to infect you. So. Be careful that it doesn't discriminate, discriminate people. It infects all kinds of people. No matter who you are, you'll just get this virus. And then the second last thing that we need to know in today's lesson, it says that we must be able to explain that there is no cure yet for HIV and AIDS, but there are life prolonging treatments. What does it mean? It means that there is no cure yet for HIV and AIDS, but there is but, but there are some medi medicine for life prolonging treatments, which are called the antiretroviral, or to say ARV, for treating HIV infection and then to prevent it from becoming AIDS. So meaning that after getting or after being HIV positive, it doesn't mean that you just die so fast. There are some life prolonging medicines that will just help you so that this HIV doesn't turn into AIDS. But then after all, there is no cure for this virus. And then the last thing that you need to know in today's lesson, it says that you must be able to discuss the myth and then the taboos around HIV and then AIDS. Okay, as I have already said in our vocabulary word, I spoke about the myth and then the taboos. If you can remember well, we said myth, uh, untruth, untruth be, uh, belief, belief, or to say these are just stories which are not through. And then you say that taboos, a taboo is something that people cannot talk about because they feel it may be considered as disrespectful or embarrassing or unacceptable. So we are then moving on to the myth. As it says, you must be able to discuss the myth and then taboos around HIV and AIDS. Since it's a discussion, let's go through about it. Then it says, there have been a lot of myths and then taboos that spread about HIV and AIDS over the years. These myths and then taboos are as follow. It's number one can be having sex with a virgin can cure HIV and AIDS. So that's the first uh, myth uh, which is given to us. So if someone happened to come to you as a virgin and then the, the, and then, and then the person tells you that since you're a virgin, can you do sex, sexual intercourse with you so that that person will be uh, cured? So it's not right, it's a myth, so don't do it. 
And then the second myth says that HIV and AIDS turn your skin lighter. So meaning that it doesn't mean that if you happen to find a person who is light, uh, who is having a light skin, is HIV positive. No, it's not. That's already a myth. And then the second last uh, myth, it says that you can get HIV and AIDS by even sharing spoons, knife, and then other things. So don't start saying that since one person in your house is HIV positive, then you'll stop maybe using, uh, sharing a, a knife or whatever it is. It doesn't spread like that. That's already a myth. And then the last one, it says that AIDS patients are always thin. This is a myth also. Some of us have a belief that whoever is thin, that person is HIV positive. It's a myth. Not everyone who is thin has a, uh, the virus. And then you say that we need to be aware of this myth and then taboos because wrong information is dangerous and then can lead to the further spreading of HIV and AIDS. And then please, you must take note. NB, these are all false stories. Wait, and then I see somewhere that we need to do uh, some changes or to say correction. Why it's written, but myth, you must say, however, no, no. It says, these are all false stories that were meant to mislead the nation, especially people that are easily convinced. Meaning that if you are one of those people that, that, uh, that can be convinced so fast, or to say, if you are one of those people that believe so fast, then you will end up finding your, uh, yourself into problems. In conclusion, today we have spoken about the different ways in which HIV is transmitted and then also some ways in which HIV is not transmitted. And then you say that HIV is transmitted, HIV is transmitted from mother to child during birth. And then another way it, uh, it says HIV is transmitted through blood contact. And then the last one that we have looked at, we say that it, uh, it transmits through sexual intercourse. And then the different ways in which HIV is not transmitted, we speak about shaking hands, swimming together, eating together, kissing, and then many more. And then the other thing that we have looked at, we have, look, we have also spoken that HIV and AIDS does not discriminate people. So meaning that you must be aware that no matter how rich you are or who you are, HIV can still infect you. Whether you are tall, short, or whatever person you are, HIV does not discriminate. And then the second last thing that we have looked at, we say that yet there is no cure for HIV and AIDS. There are only some medicines which are called the antiretroviral, or to say ARV, that are used to treat people that are infected, not really to treat, just to help out people that are infected by the virus, and then, and then just to help them, and then just to help this uh, virus from not turning or becoming AIDS. And then the last thing that we have looked at, we have looked at different, uh, we have looked at myth and then the taboos around HIV and AIDS. And then we say some of this myth can be having, a, having sexual intercourse can cure this virus or to say it can cure HIV and AIDS. And then another myth and then some other myth that we have looked at, we say that HIV uh, patients, they are always thin and then their skins are lighter. And then we say that all those ones are myth. Okay, before we call it a day, I want us to go on page 25 where we are going to look at some questions and then we are going to get answers for these questions. Okay, let's start. Question number one. It says that state three ways in which HIV is transmitted. Number two, state three ways in which HIV is not transmitted. And then lastly, it says that discuss myth and then taboos around HIV and AIDS. I am hoping that most of us, if not all of us, will be able to get the right answers for these questions. Or otherwise, if you don't get them right, I encourage you to go through and then listen to the video once more. Thank you. I am hoping that you have enjoyed our lesson. 
Let's not forget to sanitize our hands every time. And then as we are sanitizing our hands, we make sure that we are applied properly, both inside and then also at the back of our hands, and then also between our hands, and then we maintain the social distance, we put on our mask. And then as I have already said it earlier, I said that even though our schools are closed because of COVID-19, this does not mean that we must close our minds also, or we must close our abilities. We must still keep on pushing. We must still keep on doing our schoolwork. Then I encourage everyone that each and every day you do your schoolwork and then you put more effort. I, th I thank you and then enjoy your day. Bye. Hi everyone, I'm Josie and I'm back. Even though the schools are closed, I thought about um, we can still do online classes, learning and reading. You can also do your schoolwork. Until next time, bye! Welcome to my zone online school. My name is Linda Shipanga and I'm with Pomwene. Always remember to sanitize your hands. And remember social distance and always put on your mask. Today's lesson is science grade seven. The topic is teenage pregnancy and family planning. Let's turn to page 21. Let's look at the competencies. Discuss what it means to be a responsible parent and what qualities and resources are needed. Discuss why abstinence, contraceptives, and condom use are requirements to prevent teenage pregnancy. Explain why teenage pregnancy should be prevented both for mother and child. Define fertilization as the joining of male and female sex cells. Now, the vocabulary, abstinence, to stay away from something. Contraceptives, these are methods used to prevent a woman from becoming pregnant. A condom, this is a thin rubber covering that a man can wear on his penis during sex to stop a woman from becoming pregnant or to protect against infections. Now, let's turn to page 22. Resources. These are useful possession of a person responsible to have control over something. Qualities. A standard of something is measured against other things of similar kind. Discuss what it means to be a responsible parent. As a parent, you must be able to look after your child by providing him or her with basic essential needs like food, clothing, shelter, etc. And then you also have to be a good role model to your children. Qualities needed to be a responsible parent. The qualities are love and care. You should be able to be a good planner, a loyal and honest person, a team builder, a supporter, a, a guider, a provider, and a hard worker. Now, what are the resources needed to be a responsible parent? A parent must secure, have a secure job uh, with an income so that you can be able to sustain your family. Mm -hmm. 
So let's continue on page 22. How to prevent teenage pregnancy, abstinence, contraceptives, and condom use. Let's turn to the board so that I can explain these methods of preventing teenage pregnancy. Abstinence, uh, condom use, and contraceptives. Uh, basically, what, what do we mean by uh, abstinence, condom use, contraceptives? How do these methods uh, prevent somebody from falling pregnant? Abstinence, this is when you say no to sex. You do not, if you do not have sexual intercourse, you will not be able to fall pregnant, or a boy will not be able to make a girl fall pregnant if he doesn't have sexual intercourse. Condom use. This is another method that one can use to prevent themselves from falling pregnant or impregnating a girl. Uh, a condom traps spams, so the spams will not be able to enter a female vagina, so she will not be able to fall pregnant. And then we have contraceptives. Contraceptives are different methods that a woman can use to prevent herself from falling pregnant. Uh, for example, we have the implant, we have the loop, we have the diaphragm, we have injections and pills. Uh, they make it impossible for the ovaries to release egg cells. And then if there are no egg cells, fertilization will not be able to take a place. What is fertilization? Fertilization is the joining of the male and the female egg cell. If you look on this diagram, you can see fertilization taking place. Uh, this one that you see here is a sperm cell joining with an egg cell. This round one is an egg cell, so it's fusing, it's joining so that a baby can be able to form. So that's basically what fertilization means. Now, why should teenage pregnancy be prevented? There are three reasons why teenage pregnancy should be prevented, and that one you can find it on page 23. So these three reasons why teenage uh, pregnancy should be prevented are for economic reasons. Teenagers do not have money to support a child. Reason number two, for educational reasons. A teenager might drop out of school to take care of a baby. Reason number three, for health reasons. Teenagers' bodies have not yet fully developed to grow an un unborn baby. You know a teenager's body is, is still very young. She's still yet growing and then you fall pregnant and then your body now has to work very hard so that you can be able to sustain or just uh, uh, make that baby grow inside of you. So it, it, really, it becomes very difficult for the body. And these complications, uh, the health reasons, the complications can be uh, even mentally, emotionally, it's, it's traumatizing. Even for the, for the baby, you might be able to give birth to a premature baby. <music>
In other words, the ovaries are not able to release the egg cell, and then fertilization will not be able to take place. So what is fertilization? Fertilization is a joining of the male and the female sex cells. I hope you have enjoyed today's lesson. So let's always remember to sanitize our hands. Let's remember social distance as well. And then always wear your mask. It's from our side. It's goodbye. Hi, everyone. My name is Shashi. I'm back. And you can always stay active throughout the lockdown. Uh, you can play with your friends, but keep your distance. Like me, my friend. Yay! And you can also talk and sing to be active. Until next time. Bye! Yeah.